Hey there. You can get the rafter lengths from a roof from a book. It's not complicated mathematics either. My 12 year old son's doing it right now. None of us are mathematicians on the job. I don't use a full length rafter book. I just do basic math like my 12 year old is doing actually right now. I'm helping him at home for these next couple of weeks do his homework and it's Pythagorean theorem. This is how I do it. First I take the rafter pitch. I'll show you just like I would on the job. I'm gonna scooch up alongside you. This pitch of this roof is gonna be a 12-12. This is called the rise ratio, the rise run ratio. For a 12-12 pitch, for every 12 inches it runs on the level, it rises 12. So that ratio is one. For every 12, it's 12, it's one. So that's the number we need to calculate heel stands, ridge heights, and so forth. So I write that number down. And then the line length ratio of the common rafter, the line length, and I'll show you what a line length is with this drawing here. This is the parts of a roof here. The line length, and you can see these are two rafters and a ridge with no tails. And I have a heel cut drawn there. I have the seat cut. And I have, here you can see the heel stand here and the ridge cut and the run drawn out and the plate line here. The line length is from the corner of the building up at the angle of the roof where it meets the ridge. That's the line length of the rafter. And we just slide it on up to the top of the rafter and that's how we calculate it. There's some rafters you can't do that with, like a curved rafter. You can't use the top of the rafter. You have to use a line, straight line and calculate everything off of the straight line. So that's the, that's the rafter length or the line length. And so there's a line length ratio, which is for a common rafter here on a 12-12 pitch is 1.414. Uh, it's easy to get. You just take 12 squared plus 12 squared equals, punch the square root of, and then that'll be 16.97. And you divide it by 12 inches to put it in inches. And that's it because we do everything in inches over here. 1.414 is the line length ratio. Write it down. I usually write it on a piece of plywood if I'm calculating the rafter lengths on the job or if it's at my desk, make sure I don't screw it up. Next one is the hip valley line length ratio. Now the hip has the same rise, but it has a different run. It's an elongated run. So we have a, a larger number there. Essentially what it is is if you had a 12-12 box, which I talk about over and over on this YouTube channel, the diagonal is 16.97. Uh, so it's 12 squared plus 16.97 squared equals the square root of which you divide by 12 to put it in inches. Divide by 12 to put it in inches. Not by 16.97 or 17. You divide by 12. Same as a common rafter. And you'll get 1.734. The reason we divide it by 12 is because we want to multiply the run by it. The run is always at a 90 to the plate line, just like this drawing. This is the run for both the hip rafter and the common rafter, this run here. And then I write down the parts of the roof. I write PC for plumb cut, HC for heel cut, HS for heel stand, and SC for seat cut. Calculate what it's going to be. Now, heel stand's drawn right here. It's also called a height above plate sometimes, heel stand. And the seat cut is this one here, running on the level, right? And the, the plumb cut is the overall heel cut plus, this is the heel cut down here. This is the little black triangle that you cut off and throw away. Remember, these have no rafter tails. The plumb cut is the ridge cut, or it's, it's down here before you run, uh, you've tossed the heel cut. And we need to write these numbers down, these down, PC, HC, HS, SC, and figure out what they are. Plum cut on a 2x4, because that's what these rafters are here, for a 12-12 is 5 inches. You draw a 45 degree angle along a 2x4, which is 12-12, and it'll be 5 inches. Now, here's where I use the rise ratio. 
the rise ratio, remember it? I want a seat cut that's an inch and a half on this little model I'm gonna calculate. And so I take an inch and a half to figure out what heel cut's gonna be, which is this little triangle here, right here. I have an inch and a half run. I need to find an inch and a half fall so I can figure out what this little triangle is, right? But I don't know it yet, so I say, seat cut is an inch and a half times one equals an inch and a half in this case. So our heel cut's an inch and a half. So I take the plumb cut, subtract the heel cut, that gives the heel stand. So I just take these numbers here and I use them to figure out these numbers here. That's it. There's one other number we need, which is the common difference on 16 inches on center for a jack rafter. So I take 16 inches, multiply it by the common rafter line length, because a jack rafter is a common rafter. Emanates from the plate line at 90 degrees in plan view. The rafter, the plywood, hits the spine of the common rafter. The common rafter doesn't turn or like a hip or valley. That's the definition of a common rafter. So a jack rafter is an interrupted common rafter. So we take 16 inches, multiply it by the common rafter line length, and we get 22.62 inches, which is 5 eighths of an inch. 62 cents is 5 eighths of a dollar. 5 eighths of an inch, right? So now I have the span here. The span in this little model, say, is 42 inches. Now, span is from outside of the building to the outside of the building, right? So the first thing I do is subtract the ridge thickness. Right here, you can see I took an inch and a half away. 42 inches, that's the span minus an inch and a half is 40 and a half. Then I divide it in half. You can multiply it by 0.5 or divide it by two, whichever you like. The run of the common rafter and the run of the hip valley rafter, that's the run of both of them, is 20 and a quarter inches. Remember, the run is from the outside of the building to the inside of the ridge, just the rafter length alone, right? Take the run, I multiply it by the line length ratio for the common, here it is here, 20 and a quarter times 1.414 rafter length, 28.63, 63 cents is 5 eighths of a dollar, right? 5 eighths, right? 60. And then here I take the 20 and a quarter, same run, multiply it by the hip valley line length ratio, 1.734 and I get 35.11 or an eighth. So this is a, this hip valley is 35 and an eighth. And this common rafter is 28, five eighths. Here I have two pieces of wood here. Now, I'm just gonna make a cut for the common. Take my tape bag, always square down from the plug cut. Square down from it. Structure tape for the common rafter we said is 28.63 of an inch. 5 eighths. 28 and 5 eighths is right here. I like the square down. And then this is a 12 12. You just use your square like this. It's a three and a half inch C cut. You can mark it with this. Three and a half inch, I'm sorry, heel stand. So give it an inch and a half seat cut. Let's do it like this here. There it is. This is what goes away. All this, this wood here. This is the rafter length right here. Now let's do that with a hip and or valley. Set it to, this is an adjustable. Just set it to 12, 12 on the hip valley. 35 degrees or so. Get the plump cut. Now this is going to be a center line, so you've got to draw three quarters on either side to run your saw through, which you guys have seen probably many times on these videos. Three quarters on either side of it, but nevertheless, all things are to center line on the hip and valley. So I mark from center line, and I draw those to run the skill saw at a 45 down one side and up the other, right? We, we look here, it says, the hip valley is 35 and an eighth of an inch. I pull the tape from that mark, 35 and one eighth. 35 degree angle, which is the angle of it. Same thing, right? Same thing here. You gotta go three quarters on either side, because it's an inch and a half 
thick plumbing. Three quarters, Dustin. Three quarters on either side. Stand this over where you can see it. Now this is the important part. You see the marks I made here? The valleys would be to this center line. The hip is to the side of the rafter. Where the side, and I'm talking about the heel stand, where the side of the rafter runs through the plate line is where we measure our heel stand. We know our heel stand is three and a half inches. Mark three and a half inches. We're on the opposite side of the square on this one. These are pretty good squares. Oh, this is not. These are pretty good squares. Not that you get rid of right there. Yep. And for the same run, I cut a valley and a hip using this basic, basic mathematics that you can do with. This is a. I've been using this calculator. The next one in line, the TI-30XA, for 20 years, 20, more than 20 years. You don't need anything else, this is basic mathematics. Plumb cut, heel cut, heel stand, seat cut. You need that. You need the raft uh, written up here, two by four, so you know it's you know inch and a half by three and a half. You know, you need uh, your rise ratio, line length ratio, hip valley line length ratio. Those are the three numbers you use. You can calculate any, any rafter in the whole roof like that. Now here is one other thing I want to do. You see this 20 and, and 5 eighths of an inch is the jack rafter common difference. I'm just going to mark the jack rafter common difference on the top of the spine. Now this is such a small jack rafter. What we do, first thing to do is from the plumb cut, measure one inch, put this back to 12, 12. One inch, make a mark, and then we measure down 20, because it says it's 22 and 5 eighths, 22 and 5 eighths, right here. to the side of the rafter, to the short point, that's the, la the length of your one and only jack. If this was a longer common, you would do it again, and then be the length of your one and only jack right there. Simple.